So if you're on Ozempic, Wagovi, Zepbound, or any other GLP-1 and the scale is just not moving, or maybe it never moved to begin with, it might have nothing to do with your medication. In fact, your doctor may have skipped the top five tests needed to determine whether you were going to lose weight to begin with. Here's the issue. Anyone can get a GLP-1 now. You're prescribed the med, you're told to eat a little bit less, you're told move your body a little bit more, and that's really all the guidance you're going to get. Most doctors aren't even checking blood work to begin with, which is sad. And then they're simply left on their own. No testing and no plan. Just more dosage increases every time you don't lose weight. But the truth is, your metabolism is likely blocked at a deeper level. Your GLP-1 medication will not fix this. But these labs can tell us why and how to solve the problem. So these are the exact labs that I use in my clinic and I've used with thousands of patients to determine where they're stuck and what's actually slowing them down. If you're experiencing fatigue, joint pain, bloating, digestive issues, anxiety, depression, and you just don't feel like the best version of yourself anymore, like you're aging and stuck while still on the GOP-1, then this video might change everything for you. So today we're going to take a look at the top five markers that your doctor definitely didn't check that's probably holding you back right now. Now, I'm going to put this into context with a real patient. Her name's Jane. She's a 42-year-old female, and these are real labs that we're going to take care of in order to get her a good result while on a GLP-1. Let's jump into it. The first thing that we're going to be looking at here is a thyroid panel. Patients say, oh, my doctor already checked my thyroid many times, and it's great. And it's just a TSH. You guys, TSH does not cut it for anyone, anywhere, at any time. Let me show you in Jane's labs exactly what a full thyroid panel should look like at the bare minimum and what you should be looking for in your own blood work. All right, so here is Jane's thyroid panel. And notice there's only three things here. You will find the antibodies, the autoantibodies down below, thyroglobulin and TPO antibodies. But these are the main things that I want to check. So we have the TSH, which your regular doctors will check every year. This actually does look just fine, 1.5, from a functional standpoint. I'm cool with this. Then we have her inactive T4 free, which is essentially the inactive version of your thyroid hormone. Now, this is important that you have enough inactive to be able to convert to your active hormone T3. This is the most important thing that I'm looking at. Hers is a 3.1, which also falls within the normal range. Even functionally, it's a little bit on the low end, but I don't typically start to see serious dysfunction happen until below three. But we do want to take this into account because not all patients' low normal tests are created equal from patient to patient. Meaning if Jane had come in and she has all the hypothyroid symptoms, constipation, dry skin, fatigue, resistance to weight loss, then I'm going to pay a lot more attention to this. Now, in this case, I am paying attention to it because Jane came in, she was experiencing many of those symptoms. I'd love for this to be higher. Now, let's jump to the thyroid antibodies. Here are her main thyroid antibodies. We have her TPO antibodies and thyroglobulin. Notice that neither are flagged. Now, from a functional medicine standpoint, we want to look deeper at this, but the conventional side of things, the conventional doctor would read this report and tell this patient honestly, say, Jane, you don't have any autoimmune issues whatsoever. I, on the other hand, want to look closer at this. So her TPO antibodies are elevated to some degree. Now, it's not over 35, so that she cannot be diagnosed necessarily with Hashimoto's thyroiditis or a real autoimmune condition, so she can't be labeled by the conventional medical system, but she still does have autoantibodies here. A, nor a true normal test is less than one. Now, many people will still have some degree of self-reactivity, meaning that the thyroid gland is attacking itself, just not to the degree that our conventional medical system would say, yeah, this is active disease. So we want to get rid of this. This is like a check engine light. And the question is, how do we do that? So that really leads us to the second test we want to take a look at. Two of the largest factors when getting rid of the presence of autoimmune disease are going to be, one, decreasing inflammation and fixing blood sugar instability. So when, with blood sugar instability, we have hemoglobin A1C that I like to check. I hope your doctor checks this on you. If they don't, that's you got to get it checked one way or another. And then a fasting insulin. These are two very important tests to take a look at not just are you on the right dosage for your Ozempic or your terzepatide or GLP-1, but what degree of insulin resistance is present? So this is something that's extremely important. Now with Jane, her hemoglobin A1C or average blood sugar is high in my book. Now you might say, wait a minute, it's not even flagged, it's pre-diabetic. She's right on the cusp. 
And when I see an A1C and no fasting insulin, it's very safe to assume that there is a degree of insulin resistance there. And we got to get this down. My goal for every patient I work with is to get them down closer to five, which is a ways away from 5.5. Very doable. The fasting insulin right here is at a 21.7. Now this one, my eyebrows perk up at because anything over a five really starts to tell me that this person is experiencing a high degree of insulin resistance. Now, as soon as the body is trying to pump out insulin to this degree, it means that it's trying to control blood sugar spikes to the best of its ability. That's definitely going to impact your body and the autoimmune presence here. And when I talk about autoimmune presence, what else am I talking about? There's other things that we want to take a look at. And I just want to quickly show you a couple other inflammatory tests that we look at. So the third thing that your doctor really should be checking is a rheumatoid factor or an ANA both of which just screen for different forms of autoimmune conditions. Rheumatoid factor right here, the ANA was negative, but the rheumatoid factor was positive at a 20.2, which is, it's not the highest rheumatoid factor I've ever seen, but this would tell us that this patient may have rheumatoid arthritis, and she does suffer from multi-joint pain, hands, and feet. And many of us will say, man, I wake up in the morning, I feel the inflammation in my hands, and some days it's worse than others. If you're falling into that boat, that is inflammation from day to day. And we need to check a rheumatoid factor because these are things systemically that are going on that will impact your weight loss and will determine how successful you are in your weight loss journey, especially on a GLP-1. So how do we get rid of the rheumatoid factor? Again, coming back to blood sugar and insulin resistance, we really want to make sure that these things are taken care of. Addressing diet, addressing nutrition, any digestive inflammation that's happening, these are all going to push this forward. It's not as simple as just saying, hey, stop eating as many carbohydrates. I wish it was that simple, but it's truly just not that easy. The fourth thing that we really want to take a look at here are inflammatory tests. There are many different inflammatory tests that we take a look at, but there's some specific ones I want to share. One is a sedimentation rate or a sed rate, also known as an ESR. And for us, again, you look at this test, it's an 18 and it's more so towards the middle of the range here. A, do a normal doctor, a conventional doctor might tell you that this, yeah, it's it, there might be a little inflammation present, but it's completely normal, seen in normal individuals. And that's what this range tells us. It says, hey, this is normal within a normal population. However, this is far from optimal and far from normal. Anything over a two signals inflammation in the body. And then my cutoff is about a six. Anything over a six will tell us that there's quite a bit of inflammation happening here. So this person is extremely inflamed. There are other tests that we run to confirm this and we want to see a CRP. So here we have our C-reactive protein, which is a cardiac or a high sensitivity CRP. This really just allows the lab to test under three. And this is important that you're not just checking in a regular CRP because regular tests will just tell you it's normal if it's under three. When really anything over a one is a positive test for inflammation. So this patient's at a 2.5, which means that she is experiencing a high degree of inflammation that confirms that sedimentation rate down below. So as we start treatment, we want to do things that are going to decrease inflammation in her body and get these inflammatory markers down. The fifth test I wanna show you here is really interesting. So is a ferritin. So a lot of doctors will check iron and iron status along with a complete blood count and tell patients that their iron levels are normal when in fact their ferritin was never checked. So ferritin is iron storage. And what it's looking at specifically is the storage of iron within your cells. So two things can happen here. One, someone could be low ferritin, which means they're not storing enough iron. That means one completely different set of issues, which we definitely want to work on and can contribute to lack of weight gain on a GLP-1. Now this person has the exact opposite issue. They are over storing their ferritin. I tend to get clued into this anytime after about 300. I'm like, ooh, wow, that's starting to get up there for ferritin. We know that when someone's inflamed, the body starts making this error where it will start to store excess iron. And so for this patient, we want to make sure we're decreasing inflammation, but also I might even have her go donate blood once to just offload some of this ferritin and take some of the burden off the liver. The liver is really going to get irritated, likely, when ferritin levels start to get this high, it can cause liver enzymes to start to increase 
which can lead to fatty liver over time, along with the blood sugar instability. So it makes it more difficult for the liver to process sugar. So if we can offload some of that iron in the front end while we're working on actively to decrease inflammation, that may help lead to better glucose stability, that unpackaging and packaging of glucose going forward. You can see there's other tests here, which we're not going to talk about that need to be addressed. Low vitamin D, those things need to be taken care of. So there you have it, guys. That is the panel that I ran with Jane. And you can see there was various things there that really did need to be addressed. Even though her thyroid function appeared to be normal, she did have those elevated antibodies. She did test positive for rheumatoid arthritis or rheumatoid factor. Her blood sugar was definitely out of whack and there was a lot of inflammation going on. So if your doctor isn't checking for this stuff, you don't know that it exists. And when you hit a plateau or if a Zimpic just doesn't work for you, then you, you think, oh my gosh, I just need to increase the dosage or I need to crash my calories. When really the root cause was in the blood work the whole time and there was underlying things that needed to be addressed. Jane, what she really needs to do here is donate blood and get on a protocol to decrease inflammation. And that largely is going to do with what she's consuming day in and day out. So she's gonna work with myself and our nutritionist to be able to do that. And then on top of this, we need to figure out a good digestive protocol that's gonna to work to balance her gut out and stop this inflammatory process and get her some momentum and faster healing going forward. Jane aside, if you want me to run this panel for you so we can figure out what's going on and what the root cause is in your health or lack of weight loss, or you just want to optimize so you can lose weight faster using a GLP-1, click the link below and I am happy to help. For everyone else, I hope you got a great deal of value from this. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you did. Drop us a comment. It always helps a great deal. And I will see you guys next week in the next video. Take care, you guys.